So I agree with her. I'd rather hear them sing than me speak, but but you've got me. So here you are. Well, and I brought some help today. <laughs> um, so as far as announcements go, um, the first announcement in the bulletin is for the ladies' Bible study meeting. It's supposed to start this evening. Um, Missy is the one that has been heading that up and is going to be teaching it. However, she's sick today, so they're going to postpone that. Um, they will send out a message via Facebook. Uh, Kyle will probably send an email out, but if you have any questions want to join that, you haven't heard, say midweek, or ask Grace. <laughs> but if you haven't heard anything by midweek, get hold of someone if you're interested in that, and we'll, we'll get you the information that you need for that. Um, probably more uh, long prayer requests, but I want to give you guys some information about some of, your, uh, some of the people here in the congregation that are having some issues. Um, Karen's mom, Deanne, um, I don't know how much you guys know, but she was having some issues. Um, some vows, there were issues. She went to the doctor here in Springfield, and they pretty much told her, we can't do anything. So that wasn't a good enough answer. They called the Cleveland Clinic, went up there, and in a couple of weeks, they were actually going to replace a couple of vows. So that's a blessing, um, but keep her in your prayers. Um, at the same time, uh, Donna Dean uh, went in this week and had a couple of stints put in. Um, totally un three stints. <coughs> totally unexpected, totally unaware there was even a problem. Um, she got out yesterday afternoon, but then had to go back last night. And she's out again now, but she's still having some symptoms. So just keep those people in your prayers as we go through. Like I said, it's more of a prayer request, but I wasn't sure that everybody had the information, so I'm going to give it to you up front. Um, as we move forward, we have a board meeting tomorrow night. Uh, it's here at the church. starts at 7 o'clock. Please come join us, whether you're part of the board or not. You're welcome to join us for the board meetings. Um, men's group will then follow on Tuesday night at 6.30. Uh, we're going to have pizza here in the basement of the church. So, love to see any men that want to come out. Um, the last time I think I brought my Bible, um, Kyle read a little bit of a devotional, but we never really got around to the Bible. We spent some time just getting to know each other and uh, having some fellowship together. So come join us so we can uh, we can dive into some stuff together. Wednesday night, we still have the the uh, teenager, the young adult uh, group going on. Um, so stay with that. Super Bowl Sunday, um, that's coming up on the 2nd at 4 p.m. I think somebody told me the game starts at 5, is that right? 6. 6. All right, 6. Kickoff is at 6.30, the party's at 6. Okay, I can't read. Uh, <laughs> parties at eight o'clock. Yeah, come at four o'clock. I'll be there in two hours. <laughs> um, but then uh, night to shine is also coming up. Um, there are still applications out here on the on the uh, table by the door. If anyone hasn't got a chance to do that, please do that as soon as possible. Um, if you're planning on being there for the entire evening, they need to do a background check, and so that takes a little bit of time to get all that organized. So if you're going to do that, please please uh, get that turned in. Um, Along those same lines, you don't have to have a background check. They have what's called the red carpet. People come in. You can kind of come in and cheer for everybody coming in and then leave. They don't require a background check for that. So if that's an option, just kind of get your feet wet, not commit fully for the entire night, you might think about that as well. So if no one has anything else, I will go ahead and open a prayer. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to be here at this church and worship with these people. Help us as we go through our days that we might reflect your love into this world. Be with Kyle as he brings us the message. That we might find it with open hearts and open ears and uh, feel your love and your glory inside us. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. John chapter 8, verse 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of Life. If you would stand and sing with us, I am.
is not here. Because Karen's not doing it. <laughs> I'm back. All right, so this is the time that we uh, we share our praises and uh, prayers for this week. Does anyone want to start? Okay, I'll start with the, uh, the two that I talked about earlier. Uh, please keep Deanne and Donna both uh, with heart issues in your prayers this coming week. Um, a couple weeks ago, I had the opportunity of meeting with Stella Campbell that used to come here. And uh, she is in the process of starting dialysis. She's had continuing kidney failure, and she's going to be at some point starting dialysis. So I keep her in there. Okay, so keep Stella in your prayers. Um, Charlie, I don't know, Charlie hasn't been here for a while. He's been battling sickness since uh, the turn of the weather. Maybe if it would decide to be cold, it would be all right. Uh, but he's had pneumonia, and then he says Nikki is still not doing well with her legs. So, you know, prayers for him. He's reaching out to me on behalf of my mom, but then, you know, he and Nikki are also having their own uh, struggles. So definitely be with Charlie and Nikki. Uh, praise and, and uh, prayer requests all in one. Just, uh, as everybody knows, Dorian's graduated from college. Um, he started to move on to getting job interviews and, and career decisions that he, he's going to start in his career. So please uh, just pray that, you know, pray that he's getting these job opportunities and just uh, pray for him to make that right decision and, and the path that he wants to take. Is there anyone else? Are there unspoken? We'll pray for those as well. All right, so I'm also going to pay for the tithes to those that are can please come forward. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for all the things you give us in our life. Thank you for being there for us. Please be with us as we go through these days. Uh, help us with all the struggles that we have in our life. Remember all the people with the health issues, uh, with the questions about the future, and um, you know, and the praises that we have for the successes that we're making. Um, be with our church as we receive these tithes, that they uh, they may go to glorify your work and glorify your works here in this world. That we might uh, help those that don't know you to have a closer understanding. We pray all this in Jesus' name.
team. Uh, it's good to see David. Thank you, Karen, for singing, and thank you for Jen. As though she's sick and her family's sick, she still made it out here. So thank you to uh, the worship team. I'll just go ahead and open up with a word of prayer. So if you bow with me, Father God, I just thank you for this day. Father, I thank you for this church. Father, I thank you that uh, you would lay down your Son for us, uh, that we could be uh, raised to life. Uh, Father, just uh, words cannot express uh, how grateful. I am, and how grateful we should should be. And Father, I just pray that you be with us this morning. I pray that each of you uh, give me the words to speak, and I pray that you uh, be with your people here this morning, and to just open their eyes and their ears and their minds to you and your word. And so in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Very good. So growing up, uh, I always used to love uh, to go visit uh, South Carolina, and truth of the matter is it had nothing to do uh, with my future wife uh, who lived in uh, South Carolina, uh, but a lot of my good friends uh, growing up, some of my best friends uh, lived in South Carolina, and I met pretty much all of them at FUEL, our uh, national uh, church youth camp, uh, which I always look forward to year in and year out. Um, but I only got to spend parts of the summer of each year in South Carolina uh, because of the distance. And so I truly cherished uh, my time uh, with my buddies uh, down in uh, South Carolina. And while attending the Bible College down in Georgia, uh, I was able to visit South Carolina more often, uh, which I loved. And uh, I still, I love, and I still to this day, I do enjoy uh, getting together with the guys and hanging out. Um, but there, there is one thing. Uh, that gets on my nerves when I hang out with the guys in uh, South Carolina. And that one thing is, is whenever we go to hang out, they are constantly, and, and when I say constantly, I mean constantly debating one another. And, and a couple of you guys know uh, some of the buddies I'm talking about. I'm sure you can... Uh, you, you can understand, uh, but yeah, they, they are constantly debating, and, and they use the word debate, and I use the word debate mostly, but sometimes it felt a lot more like an argument uh, than a uh, debate, uh, but they would constantly get in these debates about any and everything. Some of them were, were theological and, and talking about God and had some meaning, but a lot of them had no meaning at all. A lot of them had to do with sports or any, really any and, and everything that you could ever think of. They would debate about, and we would just go sit, hang out, have a good time, and every single night, some sort of debate uh, would take place. And I used to take part uh, in these debates, um, but I don't anymore because I got so riled up when I would debate with, with, with my buddies down in South Carolina. When, when, I was when I would debate with them, it was like I was talking to a brick wall. <laughs> no, no joke. It was like I was talking to a brick wall when I was debating with them because I would say something, I would bring a good point, and it's like they wouldn't even hear what I was saying. They, they would just repeat the same things over and over and over again. Granted, they would probably say the same thing about me. I would just say the same thing over and over and over again. But it's like we were both just talking to two brick walls on the opposite side of the room. I mean, it was pointless, and they got me so riled up, and, and they're laughing, and I don't like to be wrong, and so I, it just, it was not good, it was not healthy for me, so I had to stop getting in the debates, now, I, now I'm just the innocent bystander uh, who laughs uh, when, when they get in a uh, debate. But when we would debate, as I mentioned, we couldn't hear one another, because I would bring my point to them, and they would bring their point to me, but we couldn't hear each other. I would like to believe that, especially them. They couldn't hear. Uh, but it's because the reason, I, I believe the reason is uh, because people hear what they want to hear. Let me say that again. People hear what they want to hear. So when we, when we would get in debates and we would take two uh, separate stands uh, on the same issue, I would hear only the things that would support my stand uh, on a certain issue, and they would only hear what would support their stand on a certain issue, because one would let me tell you something about men. Men don't like to be wrong. And we're going to do everything in our power to make sure that, that we are right, even though it, 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 even if deep inside we know we're wrong, we're still going to maintain that strong out, uh, exterior, that strong outside, and say that we are right and defend our position because... Men don't like to be wrong, uh, but in our households, I'm never right, and my wife is always right. <laughs> there you have it. Uh, but can anybody else 
else relate to me? Can anybody else relate? When, when you're talking with someone and, and you're talking about uh, j just one particular issue and you guys are taking separate stands on this issue and it's like you're talking to a brick wall. It's like you're, they're not even listening to you because they don't want to hear what you have to say because they only want to hear what they want to hear. They hear what they want to hear. And what they want to hear is defending their position that they have. This is why so many fans believe that their team is the best. And they have the deep uh, conviction that, yes, truly their team is the best because they only hear what they want to hear. That's why a lot of Ohio State fans believe that their football program is better than Michigan State's football program. <laughs> or maybe that's just because that's the truth of the matter. Uh, I'll let you guys decide. But people are so convicted on the position that they have because they only hear what they want to hear. And if you didn't get the message, that's what we're going to be talking about this morning. Is we're going to be talking about how people hear what they want to hear. And, and I find so many examples in my daily life uh, that, that hold this true, that people hear what they want to hear. You may also have heard people see uh, what they want to see. And, and, and this is so true. But the truth of the matter is this is not a new principle that we're dealing with just in the 21st century. This is really a human nature principle that, that goes all the way back to the beginning. And we can see a beautiful example of this take place in the book of Jeremiah. So if you have your Bibles, you can open up to the book of Jeremiah, one of the five major prophets. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, the five major prophets. So in the book of Jeremiah, we'll be starting in chapter 14, and we'll see a beautiful example of people hearing what they want to hear. But before we dive into the depth, dive into the text, I want to give you a bit of context as to what is taking place. Because whenever you dive into the scriptures, it's crucial that you have the overarching picture of what's taking place. you got to know what's taking place in and around and before and after uh, this time. Uh, it helps you uh, more fully understand what's going on. So Israel, uh, many of us may know that Israel was one unified nation at one point in time. Israel, uh, they, they were one unified nation under King Saul, under King David, and under King Solomon. And, and that was known as the United Kingdom, the United Kingdom of Israel. As they are one big nation, the 12 tribes of Israel came together to form one big nation of Israel. Now Solomon, Solomon had a son uh, who, who took place, who, who uh, reigned over the nation of Israel. His name was Rehoboam. And now Rehoboam, uh, he kind of instigated people to split the kingdoms into two. So under the rule of Rehoboam, uh, the, the one unified nation of Israel split into two separate kingdoms, two separate nations. We have the northern kingdom, uh, which was then known as Israel. It just took over the name Israel. And that was the ten northern tribes. And then there was the southern kingdom of Judah. And that was just the two tribes to the south. So there were two separate uh, nations for, for quite some time. And around 700 B.C., that's about 700 years before Christ, and about 300 years after Saul and David and Solomon, Assyria, one of the surrounding nations, uh, conquered Israel. And so Israel was no more. It, it was no longer a nation. But here Judah was. It, it survived as a nation for about another hundred years. So Judah, the two southern tribes, survived as a nation for about a about hundred years, a little more than a hundred years, uh, without uh, the nation of Israel really uh, taking place because Assyria conquered Israel. Well, during those uh, 100 years near the latter half, uh, is when Jeremiah takes place. So here the, the, the prophet Jeremiah, who's known as the weeping prophet, he's prophesying to the people of Judah during the time when Israel has already been conquered and truth of the matter is Judah was about to be conquered by Babylon. And so the people of Judah were God's people. I mean, when, when, the, when the two kingdoms split apart, it, the ten northern tribes of Israel, they pretty much didn't do anything right. They, they, they were awful pretty much from the beginning to the end when they split up. Now, Judah, they, they had a, a lot of faults, but they also did have a couple of good kings. Uh, one king you may be familiar with is King Josiah, we talked about uh, last summer. Uh, they, they had a couple of good kings uh, in, in the nation of Judah, but for the most part, 
Sadly, for the most part, the nation of Judah rebelled against God as well. They, they took after the ten northern tribes, and they rebelled after God, even though the people of Judah were the people of God. And, and, and they, they didn't act like they were the people of God, though, because they were being heavily influenced by the other nations. They, they took part in their wicked practices. The, the big three that I like to point out is that they worshipped other gods. That, that, that is despicable. That is despicable to worship other gods, to give the glory that's due to God to some other idol or god. The, the, the people of Judah, they were taking part in that worshiping of, of other foreign gods. Number two, they were sacrificing their own kids. Their own kids, they were sacrificing. Who were they sacrificing it to? They were sacrificing it to other gods. Despicable, despicable acts that the people of Judah were committing. And finally, they, they, they were big into sexual immorality as well, much like the world today. Um, and, and so those are kind of three big problems that the nation of Judah and, and really the whole nation of Israel experienced. And so basically, they were, they were falling away from God. So here, Jeremiah, a prophet known as a weeping prophet, he had a difficult job. God gave Jeremiah some bad news to deliver to the people of Judah. That would not have been a fun job. Here, one single person, Jeremiah, a prophet, a man of God, having to deliver to a multitude of people who were supposed to be God's people, but acting total opposite of that. And God gave Jeremiah some bad news to deliver to the, to the people of Judah. And, and that's really a, a huge part of the book of Jeremiah. But we're jumping uh, forward to chapter 14. And we'll start in verse 11. In verse 11, uh, God is talking to Jeremiah. And, and it says, The Lord said to me, that's Jeremiah, Do not pray for the welfare of this people, that is the people of Judah. <coughs> though they fast, I will not hear their cry. And though they offer burnt offering and grain offering, I will not accept them. But I will consume them by the sword, by famine, and by pestilence. I, I won't even really dive into that. But verse 11, that's strong. God is telling <laughs> Jeremiah to not even pray for the people of Judah. That's how far off they have fallen. That's how, how far the, the people of Judah have strayed from God, where Jeremiah, or God told Jeremiah, his prophet, to not even bother praying for them. For, for God won't listen to it. He says, though they fast, I will not hear their cry. I will not accept them. But I will consume them by the sword, by famine, and pestilence. So here God, he wants Jeremiah to tell the people that God is going to consume them by the sword and by famine and by pestilence. Now again, that, that is not a fun message. Uh, I, I can sympathize with Jeremiah here and understand why he would be known as the weeping prophet. But God wanted Jeremiah to deliver this bad news to the people of Judah. But Jeremiah replies in verse 13 and he says, Then I said, Ah, Lord God, behold, the prophets say to them, you shall not see the sword, nor shall you have famine, but I will give you a sure peace in this place. So here Jeremiah is talking to God, and God tells him this bad news to deliver the people. But Jeremiah's like, God, all these other prophets are telling them that they won't experience famine, that they won't be struck by the sword, that they're, that they're going to experience peace, that they can rest assured they'll, they'll experience peace. But in verse 14, the Lord said to me, The prophets are prophesying lies in my name. I did not send them, nor did I command them or speak to them. They are prophesying to you a lying vision, worthless div divination in the deceit of their own minds. Therefore, thus says the Lord, concerning the prophets who prophesy in my name, although I did not send them, and who say sword and, sh sword and famine shall not come upon this land, by sword and famine, those prophets shall be consumed. And the people to whom they prophesy shall be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem, victims of famine and sword, with none to bury them, them, their wives, their sons, and their daughters, for I will pour out their evil upon them. So here Jeremiah replies to the Lord, saying all these other people are saying that they're going to experience peace. God tells Jeremiah, these prophets are lying. They, they did not come from me. I did not send them. I did not give them a word to speak. They are false prophets. And these false prophets, the, the, these false people speaking on behalf of God, 
are telling the people of Judah that, listen, guys, everything is going to be all right. You just keep doing the things that you're, that you're doing, and don't worry, God is going to send you peace. That's what the, these other people were saying, that, that everything's going to be all right. Rest assured, God will deliver you peace. And now, of course, the Israelites did not listen to or the people of Judah, also known as the Israelites as well. The, the, the people of Judah, they did not listen to the message of Judah, or, uh, of Jeremiah. They did not listen to him. Rather, they listened to all these false prophets telling them that, hey, everything is going to be all right. Hey, God's going to give you peace. So basically, just go on. Go, go worship these other gods. Go sacrifice your kids to these other gods. Go, go partake in, in, in the sexual immorality. That, that's, that's the basis of the message that these false prophets were telling to the people of Judah. And the people, and, and again, this was a lie. That this, this was not from God. For God said that he was going to destroy them because they were acting very very wickedly, after again, all that God had done for them, they insisted uh, on rebelling against God. And the people wanted to hear, <laughs> not what Jeremiah had to say, but the people wanted to hear what the false prophets had to say. And, and, and they followed what the false prophets had to say. And, and I know that for a fact because jumping back to, to chapter 5 of Jeremiah, chapter 5, verses 30 and, and 31 reads, An appalling and horrible thing has happened in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests rule at the direction. My people love to have it so. But what will you do when the end comes? So here it says that a horrible thing is taking place in Judah. A horrible thing. And that horrible thing is that there's false prophets speaking lies to the people. And it doesn't say that the people detest these lies. It says no. It says, my people love to have it so. These people love to hear these lies that these false prophets are speaking to them. Why? It's because what, it's, that's what they want to hear. They don't want to hear that God is going to strike them down by sword and famine and pestilence. Rather, they want to hear that God is going to send them peace. And these prophets, they, they, these false prophets didn't want to deliver this bad news to the people of Judah. No. I mean, it's, it's no fun coming up here sometimes to preach some bad news, to preach a message of repentance. It's needed, it's needed but sometimes it's no fun. <coughs> it's no fun sometimes, but sometimes that is what is needed. And these people loved to hear these false prophets. They loved to hear that everything was going to be okay. And they heard it, they listened it, they, they followed it. Why? Because people hear what they want to hear. They were oblivious to the words of Jeremiah because they didn't want to hear what Jeremiah had to say. Rather, they focused on the words of these false prophets. Why? Because they wanted to hear those words. Because again, let me say this a lot, but again, people hear what they want to hear. And man, Je Jeremiah had it rough. He, he had the task to deliver bad news to a group of no good people. And meanwhile, there, there were a, a, a large group of people giving them good news, false lies. And the people were listening to these false lies. And here, Jeremiah, known as a weeping prophet. Man, I have a lot of respect and sympathy for the prophet of Jeremiah. <laughs> Although even though the Israelites hardly listened to Jeremiah, he, he stayed on his course. But again, the Israelites did not listen to Jeremiah. They didn't listen to what he had to say. Why? It's because they didn't want to hear what he had to say. But again, they listened to the false prophets, so we may ask why. It's because they wanted to hear what they have to say. And so that is a perfect example found in the book of Jeremiah, that people hear what they want to hear. But again, this isn't just an Old Testament principle. This, this isn't just something that took place in the Old Testament. Near, near the end uh, of the Bible, it's in the book of 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3, right, right after uh, the book of 1 Timothy. 
always get a kick out of that, even if you guys won't. Thank you for the sympathy chuckles there. And in the book of uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, it says, For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off in two minutes. So here Paul is telling Timothy that there's a time coming where people will no longer seek to hear the truth. They will no longer seek to hear sound teaching. But having itching ears, basically wanting to hear something different, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. And because of this, they will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. Here Paul is Paul's saying that there is a time coming. Well, I believe that time was, was already taking place in, in the book of 2 Timothy. It was already taking place in the book of Jeremiah beforehand. And it's taking place right now where people no longer, they don't want to hear the truth. We're living in a society where, where truth of the matter, now, now people probably will admit this, the truth of the matter is people don't want to hear sound teaching. <clears throat> But they have itchy ears and, and, and they want to hear the, these false teachings that make them feel good about themselves. <laughs> I mean, that, that is so much the message here in America, in our society and culture, is feel good about yourselves. Feel good. It's all about raising your self-image. And, and, and yes, that's important to have a healthy self-image. But we're willing, uh, Americans are willing to tell themselves anything just to make them feel good about themselves. Why? Because people hear what they want to hear. People hear what they want to hear, and here Paul is warning us of this exact thing, that there's going to be a time where people are no longer seeking the truth, but there's going to be a time where people have itching ears, and they're, and they're going to wander off into these myths. That's the danger of hearing only what you want to hear and hearing stuff that makes you feel good. Paul says that danger is wandering off. That's the danger that we experience today, is if we only hear what we want to hear, and if what we want to hear is what makes us feel good, then Paul says we have a danger of wandering off. And that's a danger today. That's a danger that we all experience today in our culture and a society. That's the same danger that they faced back in 2 Timothy. That's the same danger that they faced in the time of Jesus. That's the same danger they faced in the time of Jeremiah. To the matter, that's the same danger that Adam and Eve faced, as Eve didn't want to hear that they couldn't eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Rather, Eve wanted to hear that she could eat. So what did they do? They ate of the forbidden fruit. I mean, the danger is very evident, and people want to hear what makes them feel good. People want to hear that lusting after other people is okay. People want to hear that being greedy with your money is only fair because, hey, you earned it. People want to hear that there's no harm in watching pornography, for you aren't hurting anybody else doing it. People want to hear that, oh, you should get them back. They did you wrong, so you better get them back. People want to hear that. People want to hear that, hey, you should partake in homosexual relationships. That's all right. God made you the way you are. People want to hear that sex outside of marriage is all right because everyone is doing it. People want to hear that it's all right if you make a little lie. I mean, white lies are a big deal. I mean, that's the stuff that we want to hear basically as humans, as people, as human nature. We want to hear what makes us feel good. But let me tell you, when in doubt, it's the difficult news that we need to hear. <laughs> when in doubt, it's the difficult news that we need to hear. The news that forbids us to lust, forbids us to be greedy, forbids us to watch pornography or seek revenge or partake in homosexual relationships or having sex outside of marriage or telling a lie. Those, those are just a few examples of the difficult news that helps keeps us on track. People want to hear what they're doing is alright. Because let me tell you, change is difficult. I, I think we all know that. That change is difficult. People don't want to change their habit, their, their habits, especially when they get enjoyment out of their poor habits. They, they want to try to justify what they are doing, so they're only going to hear stuff that they want to hear. And it's so easy to fall in the, into the trap of just hearing 
what makes you feel good, looking for ways to defend your poor habits and thoughts. <laughs> or on another note, uh, when, when talking about doctrine sometimes uh, with some people, uh, it, again, it, it's like you're, you're talking to a brick wall because you, you may deliver a brilliant point, but they aren't listening. Why? Because they don't want to hear what you have to say. Why? Because they don't want to change their stand. Because change is difficult. It's difficult to change a belief that you've held for so long, but again, it bleeds so much deeper than just our beliefs, just our doctrines. It, ble it bleeds into our habits and our practices and our thoughts. And it's so, so dangerous to only hear what makes you feel good. The closing passage, to, going back into Jeremiah chapter 5, you, you don't have to go back, we, we just read it, but I want to read again Jeremiah chapter 5, verses 30 and 31. And in it it reads, an appalling and, and, and horrible thing has happened in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests rule at thy direction. My people love to have it so, but what will you do when the end comes? What will you do when the end comes? Here they're asking, what are you going to do when the end comes? When Jesus comes to, to, to judge and rule this world, what are you going to do if you love to hear these lies that society and our culture are telling you? That all this stuff, that being greedy, that the, the sexual immorality, the, the, the little white lies, they're all okay. What are you going to do when the end comes if you love to hear those lies? What are you going to do? When someone tells you that lusting is all right and you listen to them, what are you going to do when the end comes? When someone tells you that watching pornography is all right and you listen to them, what are you going to do when the end comes? When someone tells you that being greedy is all right, and you listen to them, what are you going to do when the end comes? When someone tells you that seeking revenge is all right, and you listen to them, what are you going to do when the end comes? When someone tells you that telling a little lie is all right, and you listen to them, what are you going to do when the end comes? I don't know, if you listen to those lies, uh, you might have a scary future. For it's so easy to fall into this trap, to only hear what makes us feel good. So the question is, how do we combat this trap? How do we combat the, the, this attack? And it's super simple. But how to combat this is to desire to seek the truth. Don't desire to hear what makes you feel good, but desire to seek the truth. Make a deliberate effort to seek the truth rather than just uh, seeking to hear what makes you feel good. And let me tell you, it's human nature to hear what makes you feel good. You have to make a deliberate effort. It has to be on your mind to deliberately seek the truth. Because if it's not on your mind, you're just going to take the easy route. You're going, to, you're going to hear what you want to hear. You're going to hear the points that defend your position. And so to combat the, the, this evil trap, this evil snare of hearing what makes us feel good, you have to desire to hear the truth. You have to seek the truth. That, that's one thing that I love about the, the, the Church of God, the organization that we're affiliated with. We're, we're a group of churches, independent churches, that, uh, to be quite frank, I, I believe we, we are de deliberately seeking out the truth. And, and, and a lot of our, our beliefs don't conform to the rest of Christianity in America, really around, around the world, such as the immortal soul or, or doctrines on the Trinity. And it'd be so easy to conform to the rest of the world, to conform to the rest of Christianity and their doctrines. But one reason why I love the Church of God is that we're an organization that truly seeks the truth, not just seeking what, what could make life easy? Uh, because let me tell you, it would make life a lot easier uh, on us and make life, life a lot easier on, on me as a pastor if we just conformed uh, to the rest of the world, uh, to, to the rest of the churches. But I love Church of God because I believe we're, we're a group of churches that truly, deliberately seeks out 
the truth, no matter the cost, for, for the, the truth has nothing to fear. But again, this idea of people hear what they want to hear goes so much further than just our beliefs and our doctrines. It bleeds into our hobbies, it, ble it bleeds into our practices, it bleeds into our thoughts, it bleeds into how we raise our children, how we relate to one another. This idea is so important. And please don't fall into the easy trap of just hearing what makes you feel good. Because if that's what you want in life is to just feel good, let me tell you, you will hear stuff that makes you feel good. But if what you want in life is to seek the truth, then let me tell you, you will start to hear the truth because people hear what they want to hear. So please, let, let, let's be a church, let's be a group of people that is deliberately seeking the truth. A group of people that wants to hear the truth. Because let me tell you again, if we are a group of people who wants to hear the truth, then you will start to hear the truth and you'll start to realize the truth all around you. Because again, people hear what they want to hear. And it can be used for both good or bad. And I hope that we use that, that bit of knowledge for the good of ourselves, that we can seek the truth and that we can find the truth in and around us. Let's pray. Father God, I just thank you for uh, this day. Father, I thank you for the word that you have delivered to each and every one of us. And Father, I just pray that our intent, our purpose, uh, could be to seek uh, your truth, to seek the truth uh, not of this world, but the truth of you, the truth of the almighty creator of the heaven and the earth. Father, I just pray that, that we as a church, as your people, as your family, I pray that you guide and, and guard and protect us, that we not fall into the trap to, to just hear what we want to hear, but Father, I pray that we can hear and realize and see the truth, and that that truth can transform our lives, that truth can lead us to repentance and lead us to life everlasting in your coming kingdom. That's the hope that each and every one of us have. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Belief in Christ is that true? So if we would all stand and sing with us in Christ alone.
through Holy Scripture, the Bible. I hope this guides you, and I hope that you want to hear the truth, and so I hope that you will hear the truth and wanting to hear the truth. I hope you have, all have a good week, and I hope to see you next week.